everyone. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Donna Carrick of Carrick Publishing and uh, of the host of Dead to Rights, the podcast. I'm here today on behalf of Maydams of Mayhem to speak with Rosemary McCracken, the author of the Pat Tierney Mystery Service which, uh, series. Tell us what books are in that, Rosemary. First one is Safe Harbor, Blackwater, Raven Lake, and Uncharted Waters. They're a watery series. Yes, they're a very watery series. And you can see who's really butchering her words this morning. Sorry about that. <laughs> and this is Rosemary. And Rosemary is going to have a story in our fifth Maydams of Mayhem anthology, which will be titled In the Spirit of 13. And Rosemary's story is called The Fur Coat Conundrum. And it features a character by the name of Ellie, who is a reporter in Montreal. Tell us about Ellie and the setting and the time period of this story Rosemary. Okay Ellie is is a young woman in her mid-20s and uh, it she's working it's the uh, late 70s 1978 I believe or approaching the 1978 it just it, late December of 77 and she works at the uh, a paper that uh, was a real paper called the Montreal Star uh, but it, it's defunct now it folded a few years after that in the around 1980 or so. And uh, I worked at the Montreal Star. And uh, so it uh, it takes me back. I'm not Ellie at all. And, uh, but I worked there at when I was about her age in that era as well. And there is just a wonderful storyline going on. And in keeping with your, um, your forte of financial crimes in particular, um, because that's kind of a specialty of you. A lot of your work revolves around financial crimes. Tell us how you came to that particular niche of crime writing. Um, uh, well, actually, this story does not deal with financial crime. No, uh, but my, no. my my books, my Pat Tierney novels, uh, did uh, do. And uh, actually, at that and at that period, I wasn't uh, uh, of my life. I wasn't doing financial crime like Ellie. I was a, what they call a general reporter. You go in every day, and they give you a new assignment. Uh, but later on, uh, I, I moved to Calgary. I worked at the Calgary Herald. Uh, and then I came back to Toronto, I came to Toronto and Toronto, the specialty because of Bay Street, it's the financial capital. And I was working at the uh, at the Financial Post, which uh, is now the, the National Post, the financial pages in the National Post. Okay. But it, then it was the uh, the Financial Post uh, that I worked at. And I had to do something called the Canadian Securities Course. And uh, in order to, uh, as background for what I was doing, and uh, I just fell in love with uh, uh, financial planners and I interviewed a lot of them and I, I went off at doing a lot of freelance after that for publications read by financial planners and that's how I got my pet Tierney character. But the Ellie character was uh, just a young girl who's a general reporter at the time mm -hmm. and which mm -hmm. I was, I didn't have a clue about financial issues or financial reporting and I, I, I got like Ellie, I got this, this, uh, we, uh, newspapers usually have a story in the lifestyle sections on predictions, well, uh, predictions for the new year. Now that they can have a, in the financial section, they could have a, a, a story like that, what they think the stock markets will be doing or whatever. It's all guesswork. Nobody knows, but mm -hmm. they, this was for the lifestyles section. And I was uh, actually told to do a, a, a spin on it, a, a crazy spin on it by interviewing a psychic and mm -hmm. I thought oh my god you know what am I doing <laughs> and like Ellie uh in the first uh opening scene of that story I went off and uh interviewed this psychic I love it and, I love it uh, well you know what there is a crime without giving away the story and there is money involved so yes. uh yeah. so you're still sort of on that track I don't want to get too much yeah. of the story but one thing that you yeah. did work into this story that I really I really enjoyed was the voice of our ancestors. You worked in that thing that we all have, no matter what your nationality or creed or anything, we all have something in us. And I'm not particularly spiritual, so um, I think of it more as something that speaks through our DNA. But however you choose to think of it, there's something that we all share that is kind of our ancestral voices, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You mean the grandmother? 
Yes. 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 Now this psychic actually told me the real, my real psychic that I talked to, he told me that I had psychic abilities that night and my grandmother, Catherine, her name, what he he knew the name, um, Mm -hmm. uh, would, would be making contact with me. So I left that, I left his apartment and like Ellie, I was, it was Mm -hmm. quite late at night and I was walking down the street and this little old lady is walking by me and I jumped and there's no no traffic it was quite late at night it was like uh, almost midnight there was no traffic on this particular street where I left my car and I uh, this little old lady uh passed me by and I thought oh god this is my grandmother and I jumped (laughs) isn't that funny scared her witless and I put that into my story as well well I'm still and I got home that night and I um was living by myself and I I turned on all the uh, the lights in the apartment. <laughs> mm-hmm, <laughs> Henry mm-hmm. turned all the lights on. Anyhow, my grandmother really has not made I don't her care how, uh, how diehard uh, you are. Like I consider myself pretty pragmatic in this life, but um, I'll tell you my little thing. When I was quite young, I think I was around. Um, I was just turned seventeen. I went to visit my grandmother on the east coast, and um, just me. My family didn't go. And uh, she had just been to a psychic before I got there because, you know, I come from this long line of ladies who sort of believe in that kind of stuff. Um, I don't join them. But um, anyway, she said that somebody, she was told that a young woman very, very close to her was going to die very soon. And that there were three of the children And the second one was going to become a millionaire by the time she was 35, which was a big deal. Then, of course, a million dollars isn't a lot now, is it? Yeah. yeah. um, And that the third one would become a multimillionaire by the time she was 40. Wow. So it's all just wonderful, except that within six months, my sister was dead. So it was pretty, pretty traumatic, you know. And I've never, ever forgotten that. And my grandmother actually called me and said do you remember that I told you this right and uh, I said oh yes I do you know well, isn't that well, weird though that is weird yeah well I don't discredit it there are there are things that uh, we just don't know that that that, that are out there and uh, I don't discredit any of that I just really don't want my grandmother making her <laughs> contact <laughs> with me I've never met the lady and I'm sure she was wonderful, but uh, I've been a little bit scared of that. So and oh, she has not, I, ha, has not made her appearance yet. <laughs> Unlike the funny. grandmother in the story. Yes. Now tell us what's around the corner for Pat Tierney. Have you got anything in the works? Yes, I am. And I, I'm working on the fifth Pat Tierney novel. I don't have a, I never come up with a title until the end, uh, until it's finished. I have to, and I really, I have to come up with a watery title. So that makes it even harder. Oh, uh, no. But, but it actually is set in uh, her uh, uh, set in the newspaper world. Now, Pat, being a financial planner, does not know anything about newspapers. But one of her clients uh, is a, a columnist and a high profile columnist. So she gets involved with the newspaper world. So I guess I'm uh, I'm, I'm I'm writing a lot about newspapers these days. Uh, about mm-hmm. journalism I don't know why but I've never yeah. in the Pat Tierney books I've never brought any of that in although of course my working on with financial planners as a journalist yes. has it was sparked still character. there it was still yeah. there and it, your knowledge actual... throughout the whole series really does show your knowledge in that area really shows oh thank so. you <laughs> well worth reading if anybody is out there who hasn't read the Pat Tierney mystery series by Rosemary McCracken. Please go look it up. Get the paperback, get the Kindle edition, get the EPUB edition, get whatever you can get your hands on. And uh, they're all on please. Amazon and Indigo and all yes. those other good places. That's right. That's right. You can find it if you want to find it because uh, it's well worth the read. Um, Thank you. Anyways, Rosemary, so we've got this great anthology coming out in the spirit of 13. It's, I'm um, really excited about this anthology. So yeah. am I. So am I. I think there's some terrific talent in it. And I just I can't wait to get it all together. You know, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. And thank have you, a wonderful weekend. You too. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. You too.
the dusty road, a man alone. His vital signs go on hold. And I don't know what you've been told. But the years have turned my eyes gold. And I told you what you told me. We'd never be in the same boat for free Yet it rides Let it rock